Hello Aquarius, welcome to your April 2017 tarot reading. So before I start out this reading, let me talk to you guys uh, very quickly about energy change, okay? Um, this is what energy change means to me. So for example, if you consult a reader, if you consult a psychic, if you consult somebody um, to, to, you know, get retrieve some spiritual advice about where you're supposed to be headed and what's in store for you, they usually would give you a time frame when things are projected to happen, right? And uh, giving you a time frame does not mean that you can, you know, take a step back and rest on your laurels and wait for the, the time frame to magically manifest whatever it is that you're hoping for. There also needs to be that exertion of energy from your end in order to bring things to fruition. But there's also needs to be, you know, a, a, having that sense of like, um, that sense of peace to wait out for the energy to happen. And it depends on the situation. So for example, if you're looking for a job and somebody tells you, you know, three months time, a job's going to come through. Like, so they, they say like, uh, let's say July, and then you just sit back and don't do anything. The job is not going to come through. And at the same time, if they tell you this person is going to be coming back in three months time, and you don't wait for that three months period and you you reach out first or you know you don't wait for the month the three months period to pass and you consult another reader it basically means that you have to wait for that timeline for that energy change to happen before you can consult you know further into a situation does that make sense so i feel like a lot of you are very anxious for answers you're the most forward-thinking sign of the zodiac, so I feel like you're constantly ahead of your time, you're constantly ahead of yourself, and you're constantly wondering about, you know, what's going to happen, what's going to, um, what's going to take place, how is it going to pan out, and so you constantly seek validation, you constantly seek answers, and a lot of the answers might not, you know, in the grand scheme of things, be very important. And so I just want to uh, have a little bit of an advice, um, you know, segue into an advice for you guys. Wait for the energy change to happen, okay, and then see how things pan out. So patience is something that needs to be cultivated from your end. And a lot of the times when we want answers, when we want to see into the future, there is an element here innately of control, wanting to control outcome, wanting to control a situation. And uh, you might not look at it that way, but I feel like that's, uh, that's one of the ways in which uh, wanting all of these things are manifesting in a way it, it, that indicates control. And so you might not get the answers that you're seeking because the universe wants you to be patient. The universe wants you to experience the whole process of waiting, the whole process of trusting that the universe has a divine plan in store for you, trusting your intuition and not having to consult somebody constantly. How does he feel about me? How does she feel about me? And trusting that the universe has somebody or a situation or a job or a boyfriend or a girlfriend that is something that you need that and the universe has that in store for you, okay? So this sense of faith and trust and uh, feeling this inner calmness within yourself, those things I feel like all go hand in hand and those things all need to be cultivated. Does that make sense? So I'm choosing to, you know, go off on a tangent here regarding energy change because I'm getting a very anxious energies with you guys. And it's almost like... Um, you you it, it's almost feels it feels like to me like you see what you want to see you feel what you want to feel and you're not looking at a situation realistically you're not looking at the reality of a situation so it, it's not so much that you're no you, you're not a naive sign so i i don't want to say you're looking at the world through rose colored glasses i feel it's more more like despite the evidence you see what you want to see and you only hear what you want to hear and you're not looking at a situation objectively so that's the first warning that i'm seeing here okay and then the the second thing is is this so let's just say i i feel like a lot of you have come have have gone through experience quite a bit of pain 
the past three years. Okay, so quite a bit of pain the past three years. And it's gotten to the point where you don't trust your intuition anymore. And you need to find a way to resolve it and you need to get it, find a way to get in touch with your intuition. So that means doing heavy meditation, doing heavy grounding, so that you're not running away with your thoughts, so that you're not like overanalyzing, overthinking, and uh, shooing away your intuition when, when those uh, psychic intuitive hits are trying to come through. You need to learn to trust yourself. You need to learn to trust that there is divine timing, and you need to learn to trust your intuition, your gut instincts. And, um, you know, it's like a skill. The more you use it, the more it's activated. The less you rely on it and the, or the more you choose to ignore it, the duller it gets. And pretty soon it might not be there when you need it. So just be very careful about how we approach intuition. And innately, you are a very rational sign. And so through scientific inquiry, you know, you through like deduction, through experimentation, through trial and error, you believe what you want to believe based on, you know, circumstances, based on trial and error, based on these uh, rational ways of thinking. And you might downplay um, the, the role that intuition has on your decision-making processes, on your ability to judge people. You might downplay overall intuition because it is faith-based. And so I feel like you might value rationality over intuition. And intuition is just something that you say you believe in, but I feel like deep down, a lot of you trust your rational mind a lot more than your intuition. And because of it, it might be actually very difficult for you to get in touch with your intuition or even to trust your intuition. So having said those things, please don't get upset. I feel like it needs to be said because the, the reading is a little bit problematic. It's not bad. It's just um, I feel like you want you see what you want to see, and you're not seeing the the warning signs. You're not seeing the red flags. You're not seeing like um, the pitfalls. So it, it's almost like you're seeing the best in a situation. You're hoping for the best, and when you're fixated on something, you only want the best. And everyone wants the best, but they're realistic. And I feel like because you're so fixated on this specific outcome, you can't really picture it being anything else. So I feel like you might have blinders on, you might ignore blind spots, you might ignore your intuition, okay? And so let me talk about the past very quickly, and then I'll transition into the future. To, to avert some of these um, things, okay? So you've been hurt really badly in the past, right? And uh, I feel like some of you, um, I, I don't feel like you've learned. That's what it feels like to me. So you might have dated the same type of people in the past, and you're dating the same types again in the future. You might have dated somebody who's very exciting, very thrilling, very eccentric to be around. And they're all talk, no action. Okay? And uh, I feel like you're repeating the same mistakes. You might have dated somebody that you, you have really strong attraction to, right? And, um, you know, a lot of the attraction, a lot of the chemistry, it comes from, like, opposites. And I feel like you're dating somebody that is so different from you. They don't even have, like, the same goals. They don't even want a relationship, for example. And you're overlooking these things because you're just like, oh, the chemistry is so strong. I'll take what I can get or eventually they'll, you know, come around and they'll be right for me. And it's like, no, they're not right for you right now. And, and in the future, if you put your life on hold for them. I feel that you're going to be very disappointed further down the future, you know, further down the line. And you're going to be a little bit resentful that you've waited, hoping that, you know, they would be the right one. So I feel like there are pitfalls here that you have to avoid. And a lot of it comes with learning from the past and, you know, making, like, like choosing something different for yourself, choosing a different path, choosing a different type, choosing something that will allow you new opportunities Choosing something that will allow you to step out of your comfort zone. Choosing something that will be provide a new experience. Because I feel like 
deep down, you know, you, you are a fixed sign and you, you tend to go for the same types. And there's nothing wrong with going for the same types. But if we have had bad, uh, like a series of bad relationships in the past, and if we narrow it down, all the X's are the same types, then it's not going to work out. And, it, and also, in, this is not just pertaining to love. This is also like work. If you've had the same, you know, previous three years, the same type of work, and you're hoping to branch out and you're choosing the same types, it's not going to work out the way that you want, okay? So they're saying to step outside of this type, step outside of this mold, do something a little bit differently because I feel like that's going to break you away from this cycle, all right? So on the friendship front, on the work front, things are actually very, very good. I feel like there's a lot of um, camaraderie. There's a lot of good rapport between you and supervisors. So I feel like you're on the right track when it comes to work, okay? Many of you. And um, I'm sensing that some of you are just in a position where you're not really advancing anymore. You know, like um, you're not climbing that corporate ladder. You're not really learning anymore. You have pretty much maxed out on everything that you're learning. And so I feel like, you know, you're happy going to work because... You don't have to to start with from the like the bottom of the totem pole. You have um, you're in a position where others respect you. You know what you're doing. Work is flowing well. You love your coworkers. You love your supervisors. You love your managers. But mentally and emotionally, I just don't feel like you're growing anymore. You you've learned everything there is to learn, and so they're saying take the next step. And if you've learned everything there is to learn, the next step might be you know getting a new job or starting your own business, okay? And I know that those are just very, I'm saying it in, in a very flippant manner as if it's very easy to do, but I feel like you might want to consider it, okay? Just like take some time to really mull it over and, and, and see if that's something that you want to do, okay? And then I feel like for others of you, uh, this energy might play out on the relationship front. You're seeking excitement. You're seeking passion. You're seeking like this... Um, a lot of intensity in your relationship. And I feel like it's a series of seeking really thrilling, exciting, passionate, you know. Um, I, I feel like also sexual uh, relationship partners. But they're not very reliable and you're not compatible with them. So the relationships in the past have been very turbulent. They have been really problematic. And you're, you're seeking the same type of relationship right now and also in the future. So be careful about that, okay? When you, when oftentimes when we meet a new person and there are things about them that, that um, resembles the old person, it makes us feel very comfortable. It makes us feel at ease because there's that sense of familiarity, right? That's not always a good thing. It's not always a bad thing, but it's not always a good thing either. When that comfort, when that familiarity is there, it basically means that we're dating the same type of people. So just be very, very careful, especially if the past three relationships have been very turbulent, okay? So Aquarius, it goes without saying, um, once you turn your back from a person, you turn your back, you move on, you don't look back. And so once you are emotionally checked out, you're emotionally checked out, you're done for good. And so... I would advise you if you had been in a very turbulent relationship with somebody and, um, you know, you, they're like, let's be friends. I, I would say just cut it, cut, cut them loose, just cut that off because you feel like, oh, what's the harm? You know, let's be friends. But no, it's going to lead to trouble. So just be very careful about, you know, who your friends are. Because if it's an ex and they, there's still like resentment, there's still passion, there's still chemistry, there's still some uh, unfinished business, it's going to inevitably turn back around into like another turbulent love relationship. So you want to be very careful, okay? And so here's what I'm feeling. You have some really good cards, but the way that they came out, it seems to me to be a little bit problematic. But I feel like the bottom line here is that you need to be very careful about uh, compatibility versus that, you know, compatibility to me is very, very uh, vital and crucial to a good relationship. It's not all, like it's not the, the main exclusive requirement, but it is very important. And I feel like a lot of the times you don't want compatibility. I feel like many of you want the excitement, the eccentricity, the turbulence.
and that really strong sexual emotional connection because it's really hard for you to have a sexual emotional connection with another person so when that somebody triggers it like you let them in all the way okay and so it's really hard for you to let go of that person when you know they're not the right one for you and so making smarter decisions based on aiming for more compatible relationships, compatible friends, even compatible work situations, um, that's going to be really important. And the way to know that you're compatible is uh, if you enjoy the work that you do, if you enjoy the person that you're with, and you know, not just on a sexual, physical level, but more like on a mental level, more on like, um, are they easy to talk to? Is this work making uh is this work emotionally fulfilling for me are they um are my co-workers like responsive to my needs is my lover responsive to my needs are they making me feel secure are they making me like feel emotionally fulfilled you know like like things like that um those are questions that you don't ask yourself enough because i feel like you know as long as it's exciting you feel like you're hooked and the, the more important questions then that you need to ask yourself is, is, you know, is this person responsive to my emotional needs? If I say no, do they push further and disregard my no? Are they um, respectful of boundaries? So be very careful, okay? I feel like for some of you, you, um, for some of you, like, um, you like to be challenged. So it's like if you say, you know, no. And then the other person feels like they can talk you into a yes. You feel like, okay, uh, well, they, they convinced me. So let me just give them a chance. But the thing is, if you say no and somebody keeps pushing for you to say yes, it basically means that they're not respectful of your needs. And so the way you look at people and situations, I feel that you need to be a little bit more mindful and you need to be a little bit more like objective, okay? So just um, if, if, if that situation is something a little bit less dire. So for example, they ask you, do you want to go out on Thursday? And you're like, okay, no, I have an exam. And then they keep pushing and pushing. And finally, you forgo studying for the exam and you go with them because they have a really good argument. Um, put that situation in a different context. If they're like, do you want to sleep with me? And you're like, no. And they try to convince you for whatever reason, e either through persuasion or coercion, does that make it okay? I, I feel like you have to look at a situation in a more definitive way when you're dealing with people that you are emotionally wrapped up with. Because it seems like when you go through life, logic is very black or white. But when it comes to love, it's not all black and white and you make a lot of allowances and I feel like you need to stand a lot firmer when you approach love relationships because I feel like it's uh, it's activating your heart chakra and the emotions is not something that you you guys are innately um, comfortable with and so you you might use a different framework when examining love relationship partner and it might not be always objective okay so just something to be careful about we have some really good cards here that indicate meeting a really really good um, person that you will have a very strong emotional intellectual um, you know the whole nine yards you will have a really good connection with but while you're dealing with those you know exciting eccentric but flaky people while you're wasting your time with the riffraff, you might miss out on this opportunity to meet, to, to meet this really amazing person. And they're saying, what you see is not what you get. So use that logic when approaching love relationships. Use that logic when approaching you know, work situations. You might be emotionally tied to a work situation because of coworkers, but you know you're not advancing any further. So you have to make that sacrifice and let it go, okay? You might like this person as a friend, but not so much as a lover. And then you might just be like, okay, I don't want to go on another date with them. So give somebody else a chance. Give, give a person a chance and be very objective when looking at love relationships and use the same rationality that you do with everything else to identify red flags early on so that you don't waste your time and miss out on a really good person, for example. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there, Aquarius. There are some things here that I feel you want to be careful about, okay? 
but I'm going to leave it there because I trust that you are highly intuitive. I trust that you can reconnect with your intuition. And I trust that you have enough information based on my explanation here to navigate the next two weeks, okay? So I wish you the best, Aquarius. I will be back for the um, May reading, okay? Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.